Good morning. It's 9 a.m. here in San Diego, so we will begin today's webinar. Today's webinar is on structure-based virtual ligand screening, and this is the second in our series of webinars on docking and screening. Just uh, a bit about my, my name is Andrew Ori, so if you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to email or call. Uh, just a, a bit about Molsoft, so we're based in uh, San Diego, California. Uh, hence, some of you are, the time zones are a bit uh, not helpful for this webinar, for, uh, it's early in the morning, but um, we're in San Diego. Uh, the company was founded by uh, Ruben Abagayan, who's a professor at UCSD. Uh, Molsoft, uh, Max is our principal scientist and Eugene is our principal developer. And all our software is called ICM. You may be wondering what ICM stands for. It, it stands for Internal Coordinate Mechanics, and you can read the classic papers in 1994 by Ruben and Max. On, on the method that uh, we use. We use internal coordinates rather than Cartesian coordinates. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to use the uh, question panel here. You can just type them in and I'll see them. Uh, I'll try to uh, get to them uh, maybe during the webinar or, or at the end, or I may have to email you. Uh, when we get to the questions at the end of the webinar, you can raise your hand and I can open your mic if you want to, to do it that way. So for every, if you register, uh, you, you're free to have a 30-day version of ICM if you don't already have it. Uh, you need to go to molsoft.com slash support, unpack ICM Pro, the full package, and send me the 12-character host ID, and it runs on Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux. Uh, the, the instructions were actually on your registration uh, to this webinar, so you can also see them there as well. Uh, a recording of the webinar will be made available on our YouTube channel, and we have other webinars from last year and earlier this year there as well. If you just go to YouTube, YouTube and search for, for Molsoft, you'll find the things. So today's topics are, we're going to just introduce uh, the method that we use in Molsoft's ICM software and some of the success stories using virtual screening, uh, how to prepare a screening database and how to prepare uh, your protein for, for structure-based uh, virtual screening, how to screen large databases in batch mode, and then once you have, once the screening is finished or um, partway through the screening, you can always make a hit list, and this is how to make the hit list of your screening results and how to analyze that uh, hit list and how to cherry pick uh, chemicals for experimental testing. And then at the end, I'll show you how to run ICM on the command line, which is useful if you want to, for example, distribute uh, multiple jobs to a cluster or the Amazon Cloud or the Google Cloud or your own uh, server that you have in-house. So virtual ligand screening, VLS, we call it here in, at Molsoft. Uh, it's a basic, it's a, it's a inbuilt algorithms for um, structure-based screening. Uh, you can also do uh, 2D, Pharmaca4, uh, similarity screening, fingerprints, and Tanimoto distances, and also 3D, Pharmaca4 screening. But with, these are uh, sort of ligand-based methods. So today's uh, webinar, we're concentrating uh, solely on uh, structure-based. It enables you to screen large uh, databases, you know, uh, depending on your capacity, your number of uh, uh, processes you have available, or the amount of time you have on the cloud. Uh, you can screen millions or thousands of compounds, it depends on the capacity of your, of your computer. So with receptor structure-based, uh, basically you don't need any knowledge about the chemistry of the, of the, um, of the, of the ligand. Um, it's not biased to any known chemistry, but there is an option to, to, add, to bias it, which I'll show you uh, as we go through the webinar. Uh, you dock each ligand to the, uh, in the database to the receptor structure, and then we evaluate the quality of the fit in the dock structures and score them to select uh, potential binders. If you're interested in reading more about it, there's a method that, that describes some of our scoring methods here in these two papers. So by default, uh, we, we take the, the protein structure, which is shown here in pink, and we define a, a binding pocket, which I'll show you in, in like um, inside a, a cube, in a grid shown in green, and inside that uh, green box we make um, maps for um, 
hydrogen bonding, uh, van der Waals interactions, hydrophobic interactions, and electrostatics. So these are all grid, uh, grid, grid maps. And then the ligand is, is placed inside the pocket and it's constant, uh, consistently, continuously flexible as it jumps around the pocket using uh, the bias probability Monte Carlo method, which uh, I referenced earlier uh, in the first slide about um, Rubin and, and, and Max's uh, methods. And, uh, and basically, it will sample the, the, the energy in, inside the binding pocket. So recently, we've been performing very well in uh, some in this D3R grand challenge, which is a, a completely blind uh, docking and screening challenge. And it's set by, uh, so the, the complexes are made available uh, from pharmaceutical companies and they're unknown before beforehand. So um, ICM is ranked first place in the 2017 Grand Challenge 2, Grand Challenge 3 for uh, being able to take the ligand out and redock it, looking at the, uh, the the pose of that ligand, how accurate the pose is, and also being able to, um, and in the ranked first also in the, in the energy prediction uh, part of the competition in, as well. And so, and also for for ranking uh, ligands in in the hit list. So these these are described in two in two papers by La, uh, Polo Lam, and this is work by Polo Lam, Max Totchoff, and Ruben Abagayan in 2017 2018. So you can read those papers there. I can make them available if you need them. Just an example of success story. Um, back about three years ago, maybe more than that actually. Now uh, we did the collaboration between Novartis and Molsoft. We did the world's uh, largest ever virtual screen. They managed to, Novartis, uh, led by Donovan Chin and Steve Litzter, uh, they undertook 10.6, what they calculated as 10.6 years of drug compound computation in only nine hours by using the Amazon cloud, using 30,000 cores um, on, on the Amazon cloud in, in the USA and uh, Europe. This resulted in, in three new lead compounds, which are now being optimized by Novartis. If you're interested in other success stories, uh, you need to go to our website, just look for vls.html, and they're listed there with the papers, and it gives you an idea of you know, roughly how many chemicals you may need to select from your, your hit list in order to find a hit. So uh, this, this one, for example, screened 500,000 compounds, uh, 194 was, were chosen for experimental testing, and three inhibitors were found. Um, this one, 56 compounds were um, sent for experimental testing and 23 found. So you can see some statistics on that here in VLS.html. So today's uh, example, um, if you have the software open, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, cyclooxygenase inhibitors. Uh, they are uh, interesting for a number of reasons, primarily because for example, for Vioxx, uh, there was this controversy regarding Vioxx and its uh, concerns regarding uh, cardiovascular issues. Um, but they, these are pain medication drugs, um, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory anti drug class. And so we are going to be looking at the PDB, which has the code 4COX. And we're going to just screen a, as a number of inhibitors from the Kemble database, which I'll talk about in a bit, to that uh, structure. Okay. So, practically, how do we do this in ICM? So first, we need to uh, you load you load your structure, your your ICM window. We go to PDB search, and as I mentioned, the PDB code is four C O X. Just press enter, type it in into this uh, box here. And we can see that we have uh, uh, four protein domains, A, B, C, D. And inside uh, one each of the domains, there is a, a, a cyclooxygenase inhibitor, and it's indomethacin. It says indomethacin here. If you want to see the structure, you can um, expand here, and you can see that, that ligand. So I'm just going to, for this, uh, for this example, we're going to use the A chain of 4COX. Uh, you may, if you, if you are in a scenario with other structures, you may want to obviously read in more structures from the PDB if they're available. 
look for ones with better resolution um, with maybe chains that maybe have more um, have been resolved better in terms of occupancy uh, so you may you know, may not necessarily need to use the A chain you could use the B chain or whatever but I was going to delete the the other chains so I'm just going to select the B um, use shift that selects a range we talked about the selections in in webinars earlier this year uh, so uh, and then we just right click and we delete okay so now we're just left with uh, the A chains we have the um, we have the protein structure if you span here you can see the sequence we have uh, the aheme group which we don't need I'm just going to delete that that's outside the pocket and we have indomethacin we can just quickly look at the indomethacin pocket if we right click on indomethacin and go to pocket and ligand pocket interactions and then center on that ligand by selecting it pressing center we can see the interactions that it's making in the pocket now so uh, for virtual screening obviously we need to uh, remove the ligand from the pocket uh, because otherwise there's going to be no space there for other ligands to, to bind so uh, we, we will we'll do that in a minute but first we to prepare the structure for for um, for docking we need to convert this x-ray structure you see it's XR it says XR here we need to convert this into an ICM object so this will add hydrogens and prepare it uh, for the, for, the um, for docking so we right click on here and choose convert PDB we did this the other day um, there are options to delete water keep tight keep all it's kind of subjective there may be some waters that are, are very tight and uh, you may want to keep those um, in in the pocket or you delete waters usually we assume that the ligand is going to displace the waters uh, but if you but a good test before you do it if if you're in a situation you have a binding pocket with a ligand bound and uh, you have some waters there you may want to keep you may want to see whether the, the ligand can bind uh, with the correct pose uh, with with or without those waters some of them maybe that you see you could choose keep tight or delete waters in this case we're going to delete them there aren't any anyway and uh, we're going to optimize the hydrogens because we're going to add hydrogens we need to optimize the energy of those hydrogens and as we discussed in uh, webinars earlier this year we can also optimize uh, ambiguous ambiguous um, side chain orientations such as asparagines and glutamines which aren't obvious from the uh, uh, crystal le electron density and we discussed uh, earlier this year as well that you may want to look at some in the crystallography tools available you can read in the maps and you can contour the maps and you can see whether the, some of these residues are, are well defined or not in the electron density uh, but I would reference you back to the previous webinars for that uh, information so so we're going to just convert it and I'm going to choose replace the original that means it just overwrites the crystal structure and I'm going to go okay so because it, it's, it's optimizing with hydrogens it may take a little bit of time so if it does I have one prepared I oh, know it's gonna be okay you can see um, in the terminal window as it converts it's telling you what it's doing so um, it's, it's changed the orientation orientation of the histidines and certain certain residues it tells you which one to optimize the hydrogen bonding network okay so we have the protein structure now uh, prepared for docking so as I mentioned we we first need to move the ligand out of the object out of the pocket um, so one way to do that is just to right click on the ligand here and choose move from object so now we have two two um, different objects so this this one can no longer see this this one because they're, they're separate even though graphically wise uh, the put the ligand is, is still in the same position uh, but um, but now this uh, this is just the protein structure and it's empty so it's going to right click on the ligand here and rename it to, to ligand just for clarity okay so as I mentioned we, we may want to first check how good our docking is see how well it uh, redocks this this ligand so I'm just going to move the ligand 
although we moved the ligand out of the object, it's still in that position. So it's kind of cheating if we uh, dock it uh, already in the correct uh, pose. So I'm going to move it and right click and choose um, move ligand separately. It's right click and then you can use the middle mouse and you can drag the ligand out of the pocket. And then we're going to just redock it, see how well it redocks. And then uh, press escape. I had a question about the charge state of certain residues in the in the pocket. Uh, you can alter any charge state by just right clicking on the ligand on the sorry on the residue and choosing um, advanced, and then you could, then you have the option to uh, it's, it's a searing, but um, if you had a charge one, you can uncharge it, charge it here in advanced, uh, or if you prepared it um, already in a separate software, you would have the charges uh, correctly. Uh, built. So um, you can, now we're going to redock dock it. So we, first we need to go to the docking menu. You may remember last week we were using the ligand edit menu. That's fine for docking. Uh, it's sort of designed for lead optimization and docking. Uh, but for virtual screening we need to use the docking menu. So we uh, and when you when we prepare the docking and the receptor, everything is saved, so you can always open it again at a separate opportunity. But we're going to we'll start a brand new project. So we go to new project, and we have to give a name for our project. So uh, we will call it um, just webinar for COX. It has to be four or more characters, and then we need to choose the uh, project folder where it's going to save all the um, all the uh, all the docking files. So we go to browse, and then we choose uh, the wait the location that you want to save it in. That's going to save it here. Okay. Now it's asking us what is the receptor object. And the receptor object is for C O X, and so this is a ICM command line. Maybe you can't see it very well on Go to Meeting, but it says A underscore. That's uh, the the way we use the syntax in ICM, which um, is a, an atom selection on 4COX, which is the name of the receptor, and then a period, uh, which indicates it's the all of this uh, protein. And it's asking us for a graphical selection for the, uh, for the binding pocket. So one way we can find the binding pocket is to run ICM Pocket Finder, and there's a whole webinar, which we did, I think, back in February, on ICM Pocket Finder, but uh, we can say identify binding pockets. We can click here, and it will run that, and you'll see some different blobs where there are cavities. Okay, if you go back to the webinar, you'll you can see explanations of all the uh, values here, hydrophobicity and variedness and what have you. Uh, but in our case, it's found the pocket here, which is good. We didn't really need to do that because we knew where the pocket was anyway because we had a ligand bound. So once we have the pocket uh, displayed, it's this one, G underscore pocket for COX3. And so we can, we can find that pocket here and say define sites around mesh. We call these things uh, mesh or graphical objects. It's sort of it's the same thing. So we have the green selection. So that's critical. If you don't have the green selection, or if you have selection of multiple things, then it's not going to run, it's not going to prepare it correctly. And so it's prepared and uh, everything is ready. So we, we just need to go OK now. So everything is filled in. So we have the name, we have the project folder, we have the selection. You can see here that 19 residues have been selected around the binding pocket. I had a question about that you can also just select the region yourself. It's, 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 it's not that critical, uh, as I'll show you in a moment. And you just go OK. So the first thing it asks you is it places this uh, this thing, which is the probe. If you use the middle mouse button, you can move it. You can't see it very well here. It's placed in the center of the pocket. Um, but this is basically the starting position of your screening. Usually, it's just best just to leave it where it is, because um, it's in the center of the pocket. and we use Monte Carlo, uh, which is a stochastic method anyway, so it's going to randomly sample the pocket. The only reason why you may move it is if you want it 
particularly to start in a region uh, that's critical to you, but um, it's just okay to go. And there's a, uh, you see at the bottom here, there's a go button that moves us on to the next step. So this is a critical kind of critical step. Is this is the purple box? So inside this box, uh, you are going to build the maps. We're going to build. Um, I'll show you in a minute. We'll, we'll, when we run it, we'll see the, the maps. So uh, if we you can you can use the drag button here. And that makes it bigger. You can use so you drag on the corners of the boxes box to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, generally, it's, 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 the size is okay. Uh, if you if your pocket was um, if you ran Pocket Binder, for example, it's going to be a reasonable size. Uh, you may, in some cases, you may want to make it uh, smaller, uh, maybe to avoid finding ligands bound, you know, in some other cavity which is not uh, not. Uh, needed or we we we're not looking. Uh, so you can drag it and make it smaller like that. And once you're happy, you go go. And that this this is building. If I had the terminal window, you'd see that it's building building the the maps. And um, if I go to my directory. And just one second. Can't remember where I saved them. Uh, we'll find them in a minute. Um, so, if you if you made the the map the the box and you're not happy with that size of the box, you can always uh, go back to remake receptor maps here. Uh, so, uh, go to docking menu and choose uh, review adjust ligand box, and then you can adjust the the size of that box and uh, use that and then you need to remake the maps again so you go to docking and then remake receptor maps okay so if I could remember which directory I placed that stuff in um, it would help um, oh, documents. so so now we should have um, when you when you when you prepared your uh, uh, your let me just check here sorry. yeah so once your docking is prepared you'll see a number of different files uh, with that um, prefix of the docking project name so uh, I call the project name webinar for um, Cox COX so we have so all these are the docking project files so dot DTB is uh, a table file where you can edit some of the preferences manually if you wanted to but I'll show you how to do that in the graphic in the graphical user interface and then we have these um, these are called map files underscore GB which is um, the, the the grid map for hydrogen bond hydrogen bonding and then we have um, GC maps which are van der Waals interaction maps and uh, GS for example I think down here is a hydrophobic potential map GEs, electrostatics. So you have all the maps, everything's prepared. There's a log file as well. So now you're ready, basically. Everything is prepared. And then to dock this ligand, and I'll show you in a minute, we'll go to virtual screening, so we'll be docking more than one ligand. But to dock a single ligand, we can go to docking, and then we can we could dock a ligand from an SGF file, which we'll do in, in a minute. Uh, we can I'll talk about index. But I have a loaded ICM object, uh, which is this ligand. Um, in the methods in here. So I just go docking uh, from loaded ICM object and ask which is the uh, ligand molecule. And the ligand mo molecule is um, in the methods in AIMN here. And just go OK. And that will run. And then, then you go docking and then you say run docking batch. Well, I'll talk more about this in a minute when I set up the, um, the database, but you just go OK. And um, you can see one background job is running. You can see in the if you go Windows background jobs, you can monitor your docking. It's docking is already finished, uh, but you can monitor the output file here. Just go OK. And then we'll make a hit list. I'll talk about this in a little bit. But I just wanted to show you that this ligand is hopefully, <laughs> we will see, uh, docked pretty well compared to the crystal structure. So um, 
So basically you get a hit list like this, which I'll talk about in a bit, but um, your single click to display the ligand. And you can see we have a new object in the ICM workspace, which is webinar, which is our, our receptor underscore rec, which is a receptor and the, the ligand bound. So if I read in, I'm just going to rename this. Um, if I read back in the 4COX structure, we can compare the docs and the um, crystal structure. So this one, as I mentioned, is in the in the docking project. This is the docked one, and this is the in the medicine from uh, the crystal structure. So the dock pose and the uh, crystal structure pose are reasonable. Probably could be improved a bit if I played around a little bit more with the longer simulation or um, uh, with the optimization of the receptor. But um, we can just compare. If we go to tools. Um, and go to superimpose so tools and then um, analysis RMSD and then we can calculate RMSD for these two so there's a chemical tab and uh, the first molecule is uh, from from the CO uh, from the dot one so that's a underscore webinar for COX dot AIM and the docs one and the crystal structure one is um, this one a underscore four c o x a i m n and just go apply and we got an RMSD of zero point seven or zero point eight if you round it up uh, which isn't too bad uh, but one of the key things is that we when we dot the ligand we have a score so we can see that the the, the ligand score is minus thirty nine so that gives us a good threshold when we do a, a larger virtual screening so we're going to say you know, I know binders are going to be around the score of minus 39. Maybe lower the score, we'll talk about it in a bit, the better. Uh, but anyway, everything's set up. So uh, we go back to the, um, as I mentioned, we, we get all these files. So this has got project name dot one, but we were using webinar for COX. So you have the table file, the receptor object, uh, the maps. And then we need to find a database to screen, right? So uh, there are different options that you might, you you may you have. Um, so you could go uh, to the Zinc database, which is a, a very complete database of chemicals from many different vendors and and sources, over 35 million. You could go to eMolecules company, and uh, they have around six million, maybe more now. Um, chemicals and I think when you purchase them from the, from them they'll plate them for you and, and do other things or you can use um, we provide a database called Molcart which is a collection of um, about actually about 11 million compounds now from um, around 30 different uh, chemical vendors who provide us with the latest release so you could screen screen that or, or you could go to download active um, data from PubChem or uh, a, a file from Kemble and you'll be looking for files in what we call SDF uh, format so you can download these from, from this or you may want to look at um, drug bank you may want looking at repurposing a drug for example um, but generally depending on the scale of you know how many uh, processes you have uh, if you have a server or if you have access to the cloud you may want to and it pretty, usually it's a good idea is to build a focus library so you would take maybe the 9 million from Molcart and then uh, you can generate using the tools inside ICM uh, a more focused library using reactions or uh, Marcouche or just by filtering out uh, certain properties you may uh, want to remove chemicals that have you know Herg binding for example or um, a log P which is out of the range or CNS properties which uh, see there's a variety of different tools um, and I would direct you to the webinar webinars on those tools but then generally you want you know a reasonable size with diverse set of chemicals and these two would provide that these definitely can be used um, and uh, it depends on the scale of, of how you want to, to run the virtual screening but one of the key things we need to be careful of is that these databases are contaminated usually with uh, you're probably familiar with this but um uh, called these chemicals are called uh, PANES, which is a which means which stands for pan assay interference compounds um, 
and they tend to give um, false positive results in, in high throughput screening, uh, primarily because they react non-specifically with uh, numerous uh, targets. If, for example, they are uh, they can make um, uh, covalent bonds, for example. And so there's, if you read this paper, um, Jonathan Bale at Monash uh, University in Australia, and subsequent papers, uh, you can read more about them. Uh, so a lot of screening in the early days were some of the results were, were these pains and people were claiming success um, when in actual fact that the, the chemical may have been a, um, a very promiscuous binder, for example. But the good thing is in ICM we have a prediction of pains. So uh, once you have once you have your, your database, you could pre-script, pre-filter it for uh, remove the chemicals that are painful, or you can. Um, once you have your hit list, you can flag chemicals that are, are pains. So this is something to be aware of. So once we have, so we have uh, those, so these are the, where you can get your, your structures. And um, that's what we did. So for this example, we are using, um, I'm going to go back to ICM. I have a, um, I'm just going to delete it. this. Not so we have a database uh, we go of an SDF file database. So you can view that database. You go file open, and it's called um, Cox COX2 Kemble, which I downloaded from Kemble. If we we just open it and we can display it. So this is a database of of, of um, known Cox or annotated inhibitors in in Kemble for for our target. So it's just an example. So. There's only 3,000 uh, chemicals in this in this database, but you may want to, to obviously screen. You can screen whatever you, you want to. So this shows that the Cox uh, two. That's the table we're going to screen. We don't need to um, do anything with that at the moment. So uh, so you, there's no need to prepare a 3D database. Basically, you don't need to convert your your chemicals to 3D. That's all done on the fly inside ICM. So there's no there's no need to um, pre-calculate the confirmations of the ligands because they're going to be fully flexible uh, when they dock. If you are in a situation where you have some pre-calculated 3D structures, uh, you can actually uh, tell this, the software not to dock them rigidly, but that's a separate thing. It's not part of this. So you remember we we set up the project. We tells us that webinar for COX is our docking project, and now we need to. Um, set up a batch, uh, set up the docking, and tell ICM which SDF file we want to dock. So we go to set up batch ligand, um, and uh, you go to file, and it choose SDF mole 2, and then we need to browse for that, for that structure, for that the table, the SDF file basically. So we use browse, and we find it in our table, just go OK, open. Uh, you can screen MOL2 files, but you'd have to tell ICM that it's a MOL2 uh, file. And uh, the, but in this case, it's a MOL file. So when uh, we dock, we're going to build hydrogens to the, this, the chemical. We're going to assign, assign charges to that chemical, and we're going to convert it to 3D. And just go OK. So, that's, so that tells, that's the first step. So that tells you, tells ICM, that the database is set up, and now uh, we need to run the docking. So this automatically comes, but this is actually from docking, and you choose run docking VLS batch, and you see this uh, window. It's asking us for the project name, which is webinar 4 cox uh, An output, we get, there's an output file, so um, it's just the suffix for that output file will be 4 C webinar 4 cox underscore answers dot ou, and that will give you the a text file with the output data. The docking effort, this is the length of the simulation. So for virtual screening, it's pretty well tuned, and one is, is fine. It gives you a, um, a reasonable uh, simulation time for small molecules. For a reasonable sized drug-like pocket, it will, most of the success stories use just a docking effort of one. But if you want to be more thorough, you can increase that to maybe five. Um, 10, it's going to take longer to run per compound. But with one, it's going to be like between three and 
maybe seven or eight seconds per compound, maybe less than three. Uh, for everyone that's got a license for the webinar that I've sent you, just leave this as default. We do offer some other different kind of licenses for, for clusters, um, but uh, by just by press default, it's fine. Now, um, if we press OK now, it will start docking all 3,000 in one go on one processor. But you may want to split split your docking batch up into chunks if you have multiple processors on your machine. And to do that, uh, you would go to local VLS batch instead of small set docking and enter the project name, which is correct. And then you can say, I want to dock, um, I want to dock the first 1,000, 1 to 1,000, and press OK, and it will start that docking. Then you'd have to go back and um, redo it for 1,001 to 2,000 or whatever chunks you want to do. There's a way to script this, which I can talk about uh, later on, and when we're on the command line. So that's, this is a more inter interactive way of breaking up your docking, your screening project into nice, small, manageable uh, chunks. So um, you break it up. I'll show you on the command line how you can do it. And also, if you have a, a queuing system, or if your GUI or your, your is connected to a server, you can automatically break it up into uh, into number of jobs, and ICM will automatically do that on the fly. But in most cases, for the people that have licenses for the webinar, um, you could use either of these two tools. This will speed up the docking because you're going to be using more processors. And uh, but in this example, I'm just going to go OK. This doesn't really matter. Go OK. Another way, if you're screening millions of compounds, would be to dock, uh, set up in your dock an index database. So you would go to docking tools, and then you'd index um, your database, and that would speed up the, the docking a little bit more. Um, but the, for 3,000, it's fine just to dock directly from an STF file. And so we go OK. And then we should see that the bottom here would have a progress bar. It says one background job as before. And then if we go to Windows and then background jobs, uh, we can see that it's maybe not very well uh, through GoToMeeting, but at the bottom here it says it's running, uh, progress. Um, if you right click here, you can view the output. Uh, it's going very slowly, which uh, we would imagine it would be because um, there's 3,000 chemicals, so it's going to take a while to run. But um, fortunately, I have the hit list already made. Uh, you can always make hit lists um, halfway through the docking. You go to docking, make a hit list. And you would see a, an interim hit list of your docking before it's finished. Um, but I'm going to talk about that now. Um, so we, we, we go back to the slides. So as I'll show you in a minute, once the docking is finished, you'll make a hit list. And you see a table like this. Uh, you would see that it says 3D here. So all of these ligands are in 3D. So you use single click, and it will display it inside the um, in inside the the pocket. Um, and um, you get a variety of different columns. So this L column, similar to the ligand editor, uh, you can just toggle the display on and off. So if you just wanted to check, compare this one. And this one, you would just click here and click here, and you can toggle the display on and off. If you double click on here, it will load it into the protein structure. And then we have a number of different columns which are important. So we have a score column, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, the lower the score, uh, the better prediction. The score is trained, really, to discriminate binders from non-binders. Okay? It gives you a number of atoms, number of flexible bonds. H bond is um, the hydrogen bond energy, so the lower the better. H fob is the hydrophobic energy in exposing a surface to water, so the lower the better. Uh, this is the van der Waals interaction energy. Once again, the lower the in lower the better. E in e inter internal is um, the internal conformation of the of the ligand. So if it's strained, this number will be high, so the lower the better. Desolvation is the desolvation energy. Desolvation of exposed hydrogen bonds and acceptors, once again, lower this number, the better. 
and solvation electrostatics as salt L is the solvation electrostatics change upon binding so uh, the lower the the better again uh, this rec conf is we'll be talking about next week or two weeks time in the webinar if you have if you're incorporating multiple receptor confirmations you can dock to multiple it'll, it'll flag which one this prefers which one's getting the best uh, which um, of your multiple confirmations are, are useful uh, so this is the hit list so docking a uh, screening sorry is, is a combination of two steps so you have the docking step and then you have the scoring step so docking you find a putative docked confirmation for each compound you need an efficient routine uh, and it needs to be reasonably fast because you're, you're screening millions of compounds it has to be able to rank the, the native like confirmation among many different docking confirmations of the, of the same ligand and then once you've docked the ligand then you need to score it and we'll talk a bit about scoring in a bit so the determinants of ligand binding so you have um, van der Waals interactions favorable um, sometimes it's partially compensated by the, the solvent electrostatics interaction um, it's mostly compensated by solvation only becomes favorable for, for charged ligands for example salt bridges hydrogen bonds um, major determinant of specificity hydrophobicity often provides the most uh, if you've got a very hydrophobic ligand it's going to provide most of the affinity uh, strain of the ligand so how how strained it is in the inside the pocket it's going to be unfavorable and then you have entropy loss so you have a variety of different energy factors energies that are either contributing or favorable or unfavorable and they largely uh, compensate for each other but um so the ICM scoring function which um, I can send the paper on if you're interested in reading more is like a combination of the internal force field energy of the ligand the conformational entropy loss of the ligand uh, the hydrogen receptor ligand hydrogen bond interactions solvation electrostatic energy change and uh, dyno acceptors desolvation as well as hydrophobic energy so it's a it's a combination of all these factors and um, weighted and it's trained on a very large set of ligands and receptors okay so once you have uh, once the docking's finished we have um, the uh, I have quite a few questions I probably have to go through them at the end I apologize for that um, sorry yeah I've, or I'll get back to you by email some of them uh, but anyway so we, you have a, a, a docking hit list and um, the uh, you uh, you have a hit list you can sort by score you can filter that hit list and then plot plot data I'll show that you can also cluster your hit list so you may have a hit list of maybe three or four thousand compounds but you, you need to cherry pick a reasonable number for your biologists or chemists to test in the lab uh, so um, so sometimes the top scoring is dominated by one um, one or more you know one family of, of uh, chemotypes um, so you, it's pretty usually a good idea to select a diverse set and I'll show you how you can cluster cluster them in a minute and then you once you have your hit list you may want to only choose those ligands that are charged for example or those ligands in your hit list that make a hydrogen bond with a particular residue inside the pocket uh, you may also want to filter out those that have uh, poor drug lightness or pains or prediction for toxicity which I'll show you as well or those that are making particular interaction fingerprints with the receptor so um, this docking was running but um, I have a hit list I have the docking hit list uh, somewhere so I just find it here so to make the hit list uh, you run the docking as it was running for the virtual screening you go to docking and then choose make hit list here and then there is an object file see one thing I didn't mention before before sending the docking you also need to go to docking preferences and you can change the preferences there sorry you should have mentioned that earlier so if you go docking general preferences um, 
you can, if your ligand's already charged for another program, you could choose charge none, or you can choose auto, and that will use um, the uh, uh, PKA model in, inside ICM. There's some other options you can change here. Uh, sample race mix centers, sample um, double bonds, cis trans, uh, and other, ch other choices here. Um, and that's docking preferences. Or um, you go to docking preferences and then database scan. This is one I should have shown before I sent the docking. So we have a score threshold. So any chemical, by default it's minus 32. So any chemical that has a score higher than minus 32 will not be saved. So this sort of prevents um, a very large file. If you're screening 10 million compounds, you don't want 10 million 3D confirmations of your ligand. So this will, this will filter out those that are um, at minus 32. So in our case, we know that the, the uh, we did the first initial redoc, and we know that the score threshold is probably about minus 37, so we could have chosen minus 37. And then you'd only see in your hit list uh, chemicals that have a score threshold of minus 37. You can also pre-filter pre your database. You can filter your database as it's screening um, using this as well. So uh, it will only screen... Um, so you had a lot of questions actually about filtering the database. So this, this actually does it on the fly. So you'll take your database and it will screen. It, won't, it wouldn't screen any chemical which has a molecular weight lower than 100 or larger than 500. Um, and yeah, for, so these are basically the lipid famous Lipinski rules, so uh, you can also say I don't want any ligand to be screened that has uh, more than 5 hydrogen bond donors, or more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors, or more than 10 torsions. And you can also control the max and minimum predicted log P as well of those chemicals. So this will, uh, so if you took, for example, the database from enamine and you screened it, uh, it would automatically screen out these compounds, but any compounds that don't match these um, this data. So as I mentioned, we go to docking to make the hit list, go here, and then we browse and we find there will be an object file. Um, in this hit list, I didn't have webinar COX. I had, I changed, I had the, it's the same database, but I had a different docking project name, as it's COX2. So you'd look for the a .ob file with COX2 underscore answers one dot .ob. Usually this is fine, you don't need to browse for it, but you may need to browse to your docking directory and, and find that file. This is the 3D confirmations of all the ligands. And it says um, it will process the um, screening, so it's going to read um, the 2D, 3D um, data from, from, the, uh, from this object file. If you screen it multiple times and you have multiple uh, of multiple um, ligands with the same, the same ligand, it will choose the one with the best score from each one. Or you can just, or if you have a very large database and you don't want to read, if you think you're going to have a very large hit list, uh, you can just build maybe the top 1,000 hits or 100 hits here. But um, you just go OK and that builds this. And then you'll see this table. So um, single click loads the, the ligand into the binding pocket. I'm just going to show you. And you can toggle other ligands on and off here, clicking on here. Uh, so you can also add properties to this hit list. So we can go to chemistry and say calculate properties. And we can add molecular weight, um, solubility, for example. And if you go further, go further down, you will find also um, a prediction for HERG, um, Keiko binding, um, and the key one in this example would be panes, which I can't see. Oh, here, this one here. I'm not going to write it. It takes a little bit of time to run, but the, the, the these ones are pretty quick. So you just go OK. This will add a different, um, you can see the properties are here. So we could, we could maybe just look at the distribution of the score. If you right click on the score column, you can see um, we can build a histogram. Select, if you select that column and then choose column histogram, we can see a um, histogram of the distribution of the scores. So um, you may just want to, you may want to be interested in 
the ones with the lowest score. So you just select these, and that makes a selection in the in the hit list. And you can maybe delete the others or or, or not. It's up to you. You could also plot. You click here. Uh, you can analyze uh, maybe um, log p versus score. You go OK. Uh, color it. Right click color by um, solubility, and and go OK. And then you could maybe um, you can make selections here. Um, there's a whole webinar on chemical spreadsheets, but you can make selections here, or you can um, filter the things here. So that's one way to analyze your, your table. Uh, so basically, you're, you're generally going to go by score, the lower the score. The other way would be, as I mentioned, you may want to select a, uh, a more diverse set, so you can cluster this table. So if you click on this cluster tree thing, there is another webinar on clustering, which I can send you to, but um, if you want more details. If you get this cluster here, and this is colored, the table is now colored by the clustering. And you could say, I want a diverse set of chemicals I want to select. If you right click, you say select centers by, uh, by minimum score here. And this will select uh, center representation. You see the blue is highlighted. Um, this, this, you can see that we've now selected 326 chemicals from our hit list of 3,000. You can play around with the distance and, and that will increase or lower the selection here. Another uh, very useful tool, if you click on this button, you see this hammer button here, you get some tools shown here. These are quite useful for um, calculating descriptors. So we can see that we have a hydrogen bond um, here between this ligand and this this uh, this residue. If this hydrogen bond is critical uh, for specificity, for example, you could say you could select that residue. Just click here, select the residue, and then click down here, and you can see some some options. So you can say, I want to flag in my table anything that's making a hydrogen bond to this atom. You can see there's an option here, hydrogen bond to selection. Um, you can also calculate, um, some, there are some other options I'll, show, I'll talk about. So um, you can hydrogen bond selection, distance to selection, that will give you another, these will give you another column. It will help you filter out those that, uh, that, are, that are useful. And also interaction fingerprints will give you a clustering of where this ligand is bound. But one um, useful option here is called um, APF pose similar similarity to selected molecule. So one of the reasons why ICM performed very well in that D3R blind competition is that you can use not only structure-based docking, but you can also use um, important information from known chemistry about your, if you have um, activity data, uh, you can use um, pharmacophores to to also give you another score. So you have a score for how well your ligand binds to the pocket, which is called score. Um, but you could also place uh, a ligand or a pharmacophore here uh, that has the properties that you're interested in or that you know are key for binding. And then you can, and then you can say uh, how well your ligand fits to that. So I have an example for that um, somewhere here. So uh, there's one of the key one of one of the groups of uh, cyclooxygenase inhibitors are, are these um, this family of inhibitors that have a tricyclic region here. So um, and, and usually has a sulfonamide group or a sulfonyl off here. So we could we could, we have a hit list which I made exactly the same way, uh, but I just loaded this um, this 3D pharmacophore. Uh, into the pocket, and we can use how well we can also say how well our hit list matches this pharmacophore. Uh, if you want to look at the pharmacophore, there's a whole webinar on atomic property fields, which is our 3D pharmacophoric method, which Max Totra developed. Uh, but if you want to look at the pharmacophore for this, um, you go to a Chemistry APF Tools Consensus Pharmacophore, 
And you see we have um, hydrogen bond donor acceptors and this um, aromatic region here. So now we can go through each of our compounds in our hit list and say how well, that's, 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 that's not, um, I'm just going to toggle them on and off because I haven't got loads. So um, you can say how well they fit into the 3D pharmacophore. And you would do that by going to tools again and choose um, uh, property, the, the property description. And you choose the option APF pose similarity to selected molecules. So you select this pharmacophore and then just run it and it will give you a score. You get a column with pharmacophore score here. So then you could plot um, pH, the, the pharmacophore score against the uh, score. And so you may want to concentrate on those that have low 3D pharmacophore score as well as low um, as, as well as low docking score. So these would be the interesting ones. Yeah, it's, it's complaining because I'm not. So that's another way to filter. You can also dock when you, you can also place this in the big and binding pocket and dock all your compounds from your database to this template uh, and match the template. You'd, so before docking you'd go docking template and you would set this as the, the docking template. Okay, so I just want to end with um, just how to run this on the command line if you're interested in doing that. So basically to screen um, using the Unix shell or in, in, in Windows um, uh, on, the on the command line on Windows, uh, you need to use the doc scans. This is all completely away from the, the graphical user interface. So in order to use doc scan, you need to set up the receptor as we've done, as I showed uh, earlier, make receptor maps, um, set up total ICM which the database you want to run, and then you need to define um, you need to call docscan, the name of the project. In this case, I called it VLSCOX. And then you can add um, different parameters like thoroughness equals one from chemical one to 400. And so you can script the submission of these jobs to, to a large database. Or and this is what you would need if you wanted to, to run it on um, the Amazon cloud, for example. So, um, so this is all on the command line. You can do it on Windows as well. Just want to show you if you wanted to do it on Windows. Um, I need to show you. So you would um, basically define. I have. Um, you have to call first. Uh, call cmd.exe, which is the command line in Windows. Um, you would then tell ICM tell Windows where I see the ICM console is located. So in my case, it's on the F drive in a directory called ICM Pro. Probably in your case it would be C drive, program files, and then this. And then we need to add the, the name of the project. In this case it's COX2. Um, in actual fact it will just run like that. But you, then you can add um, other parameters as I mentioned, like from compound 1001 to uh, 2001, for example, or 2000 and other, um, other arguments here as well, uh, which I will, um, where well you can see if you, if you go to the slides, uh, there's um, an H, uh, there is a, the, the, here will tell you exactly the, the kind of commands you need to run. So in theory it should just run fine from, from the command like this. Uh, So it runs ICM and then you can run DocScan. Okay, so I um, just want to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions after, please feel free to email. There will be a recording made available because I know things went very fast. Um, next webinar is on how to uh, in, in, include induced fit. So you may have multiple receptor confirmations and you can use those and dock and screen to those and find, so maybe there's a loop that comes in and out of the binding pocket, you can choose multiple confirmations of that. Uh, you may have a residue that's particularly flexible and you can allow the residue to be flexible during docking. There's other tools like that. So that's what we'll cover in two weeks' time. Uh, so, yeah, quite a few questions. Um, 
yeah, so thank you very much for your attention, and um, I will try and answer some questions. Um,